There are different types of threaded inserts for plastic on the market. I bought a couple of different ones and compared how easy they are to use and how well they perform. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. Almost a year ago I released a very popular video on threaded inserts for 3D prints, on which I got a ton of suggestions and comments. One of them was that I used for my tests a type of threaded inserts that I found on my local eBay, which looks quite a bit different than the typical ones that you find on AliExpress or also on Amazon. Despite the different look, do they really perform differently and how easy are they to use? This is something I tried out for this video. Did you also try out inserts? Then let us know your experience down in the comments. For the last test I also used M5 threaded inserts, whereas it seems that most of you rather put M3 inserts in your 3D prints, so I purchased similar M3 threaded inserts as last time from the same eBay shop. I also purchased a set of these press inserts on Amazon that probably are rather used in injection molding. I also was bombarded with ads for these Rutex threaded inserts on Instagram lately that claim that they are especially designed for 3D printing. So I also bought a bag of those on Amazon. Not a sponsor by the way. They do look kind of nice, though I think that rather than being specifically designed for 3D printing, those are just proper heat seed inserts, but we'll find out how they will perform. Links to all of those are down in the description by the way. If we compare prices, there's rather a difference there. The cheap ones sell for a good 3 bucks for 100, which makes 3 cents each. The Rutex ones cost $8.99 for 50, which is 18 cents a piece, and the ones similar to last time sell for $12.45 for 50, which is 25 cents a piece. I selected the size so that the part responsible for later grabbing into the plastic were roughly equally long. The more expensive ones are kind of similar, and both feature a flange with a chamfer that really helps when putting them into place before they're inserted. The cheap one doesn't have such a feature, which makes the mounting process quite a bit more challenging. Other than that, it only has vertical knurling, which is good for the torque out strength, but probably bad for pull out resistance. The ones I purchased from eBay have horizontal and vertical knurling, and the Rutex ones even have this diagonal and opposing pattern on the outside. We'll be testing the torque out strength, which is the resistance against a rotational load, and the pull out resistance, which is an axial force. Since I was also curious how my usual method for screwing parts together works in comparison, I also printed samples with slightly undersized holes, in which I directly screwed the M3 screws. The Rutex fortunately come with a manual on the packaging, which tells you the size for the hole you need to print. For the other ones, I had to make a guess using the external geometry. In the end, I used 4.0mm holes for the Rutex, 4.1mm holes for the eBay inserts and 45 for the injection molding parts. At this point, a short excursion why your 3D printed holes always turn out too small. So you probably all know, if you are printing holes, they usually turn out smaller as they really should be. In my case, if I want to have a 4.0 hole for the insert, I need to model it a bit bigger in CAD. Assuming that your steps per millimeter and your extrusion multiplier are dialed in right, there are a couple of reasons why your holes are smaller. First, the material shrinks during cooling and causes dimensions to get smaller. Second, the triangulation of the part. So when you export an STL from Fusion 360, you can choose the quality and this refers to the amount of triangles that are created. During the triangulation of a hole, the points of the triangles are placed on the circumference, but the triangles themselves overlap inside, which causes shrinking of the inner diameter. The less triangles, the more severe. There are more reasons for the shrinking effect, and if you're interested, read the blog post of Knobhead that he wrote in 2011. 
Anyways, what I simply did was that I printed sample strips with diameters from 4 to 5 millimeters in 0.1 millimeter increments and then tested the effective diameter by just using a drill bit as a gauge. For my original Prusa and the Prusa meant I printed with, the error was 0.1 millimeters, so a 4 millimeter hole had to be 4.1 millimeters in CAD. For the torque-out tests, I printed these test parts with four different hole sizes, where we later apply the torque until something fails. The hole in which I just screwed the M3 bolt was 2.7mm, which is roughly the standard value that I tend to use for my designs. For the pull-out tests, I printed these small plates, which always only features one hole for the threaded insert or directly the screw. This time the parts were also printed with 100% infill, because last time not the insert failed, but the test specimens gave way. I used Prusaman PLA and printed all parts on my original Prusa i3 Mark 2.5 at a layer height of 0.15mm. Putting the threaded inserts into your parts is pretty simple. I just used my temperature controlled soldering iron, heated it up to 210 degrees celsius and then slowly pressed the brass part in with only minimum force. The inserts with the chamfer were way easier to push in and didn't end up with curled up materials at their ends, whereas the cheap inserts were basically blocked at the end. So definitely a point for spending a bit more money. Before we start with the tests, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and have selected the notification bell to not miss any future videos. Also, please hit the like button so that I know that you appreciate the work I put into these tests. Let's start with the pullout tests that I performed on my DIY universal test machine. Our sample is put into the lower holder. An M3 bolt then connects the upper holder to the sample that will then slowly try to pull out the brass inserts. This is how that looked for the Rutex insert. The results were quite consistent and the inserts were vigorously pulled out at 181 kg on average. This time the plastic sample itself didn't fail. The eBay insert was a little bit weaker and ripped out on average at 157 kg of load, but still an impressively high number. Let's now get to the cheap injection molding inserts. These seriously disappointed and were easily pulled out at 39 kg on average, something lots of you mentioned in the comments of the last video. Finally, we have the samples where we screwed directly into the plastic with a hole that was just slightly undersized. I was quite impressed because they were able to bear 142 kilograms. That's almost as much as with the good inserts. Next, let's continue with the torque out test. Just as last time I used my trusty torque wrench that came with my bike and seriously works better than one might expect. I screwed the bolts into place and then slowly loaded them until something gave way. Interestingly, all tests for the inserts failed at around 3 to 4 Nm of torque. Not because the insert ripped off the plastic, but the bolt had sheared off and those are actually quality screws. The part where we screwed directly into the plastic failed at around 1 Nm of load, as expected, because the plastic failed. PLA is quite a hard and strong material, so out of curiosity I also tried some threaded inserts and softer ASA, where some again failed because the head sheared, but our eBay insert with a shallow knurling started rotating in the plastic. In the end, torque out doesn't seem to be a huge issue, because the bolt is the weak link, 
regardless of which M3 insert you use, at least with PLA. This is also a bit specific for this small thread size and will probably be different for larger ones. Alright, what have we learned? Which inserts are the best and are the injection molding ones trash? So the more expensive inserts definitely won, because they are easy to use and performed also very well regarding torque out and pull out. Even though the cheap inserts performed equally in torque out, they were by a factor of 4 weaker than the expensive ones when it came to pull out. This sounds bad on first glance, but I still think that they are a usable alternative if your loads are not too high, because 39 kilograms on an M3 bolt is still quite something and they still perform the task of not wearing too much if you regularly loosen and tighten that connection. The method where it directly screwed into the plastic impressed once again and is still a viable option if you want to connect something only once. Though you have to pay attention to not over tighten the bolt, because if the threads in the plastic shear, also the impressive pullout resistance will be gone. But what's your opinion now that you know these results? Let me know down in the comments. I hope this was another video where you might have picked up something new and interesting. If so, then please leave a like and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Making these detailed investigations is quite a lot of effort. So if you want to support me, head over to Patreon, become a YouTube member or shop using the affiliate links down in the description. Also, check the rest of my interesting videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, auf Wiedersehen and until next time.